We were gonna eat breakfast at Cracker Barrel, but it is completely packed full. So busy. So I'm probably gonna grab some cereal and then we can get on the road. Are you chillaxing, Momo? Ready to go? All right, we are pulling out. I'm gonna be heading to a TA truck stop. Take the next left onto South 51st Street, then turn left onto South 50th Street. Gas is getting pretty cheap, but it's $3.20. I know it's under $3 in some places, but that's cheaper than we played last time. It was at the, what, $3.79 the last two times. So I'll, I'll take $3.20. Honestly, don't need to fill up because I'm not even at three quarters of a tank. But since gas is so cheap, I guess we can just top off. In 800 feet, turn right onto the I-10 East ramp to Tucson. Oh, we're finally getting on I-10. And heading east. Yay! Turn right onto the I-10 East ramp. Well, I'm glad we finally made it to I-10. Now I feel like we're in the right direction. Only, I think, 1,100 miles. Hold on. How far am I from San Antonio, Texas? It's 965 miles to get to San Antonio by car. Yeah, so about a thousand miles. We're about 90 miles from Tucson and about 30 miles from the intersection of Interstate 8. We've got about 32 more miles until the gas station. Not a lot out here. The blind spot mirror is working good. In my blind spot. Ah, I can still see him in the small mirror. <laughs> awesome. We're passing over the Gila River. I don't see much of a river. No water at all. Sunland Gin Road. Okay, where is it? I guess it's to the left. And across the freeway. Loves is 313. Oh, wow, that's cheap. Did you want to go to Loves or TA? TA has shell. That's what I was going to. They're supposed to be a few pennies cheaper than here. Okay, got it. Oh, there's the iron skillet. Last time I ate there, huh, we were leaving Kingman and my food was not cooked all the way. <laughs> this gas station's parking lot's a little tight, but I did it. So online it said that this was the cheapest place, but actually I think Love's is the cheapest because here we only save five cents, so it's 318 where at Love's it was 313, plus we would've got 10 cents off using the app. So, oops. But still, you know, 318, that's cheaper than any other place we've paid since we've been on the road. This route avoids a road closure on West Silverbell Road. You are on the fastest route. You should reach your destination by 12, 11 p.m. All right, we've gotta get back on 10. Our destination is about 45 miles away from here. 
So not too bad. Oversized load. Wow, that is really a big load. Oh, here comes the chaser vehicle. Our exit is about eight miles away, so not that much further. Mumu, of course, is in her normal position, sleep. All right, we've made it to our exit, 2.32. Keep right at the fort, then continue on to East Pinal Air Park Road. Pinal Air Park Road. That's a sharp curve, it's hard to see there. All right, so we just have 12 more miles. <laughs> wow. Continue on East Pinal Air Park Road for two miles. That looked like it was barely on that trailer, that rig. The back huge tires were hanging off. Um, so we have to go about 1.7 miles and then take a left. Oh, this is why they call it Air Park Road. I see like, I don't know, over 50 planes, huge planes up ahead. Oh my God, look at that one. Must be retired planes. I think that was one of the biggest planes I've seen. Probably not, because my dad was in the Air Force, so. But close, it was a pretty big one. I think this is our turn right here. Take the next left onto North Trigo Road. Not sure if y'all can see all those planes up ahead. There's just lots of them, tons and tons. Continue on North Trigo Road for five miles. Okay. Well, we still have 10 miles to go. Where does I Jeff think have that us air going? Park is like one of the uh, airliners' graveyards where they take old planes. Yeah, that's what I thought because I was like, wow, there's a lot of airplanes. There was an RV park back there. We just entered the town of Marana, Arizona. Pumpkin Patch. Oh, they had a pumpkin patch back there. And it says, bridge subjected to closure up ahead. I hope it's not closed. Bridge ices before road, narrow bridge. It's another place that we've been to. I think it's called Hippie Hole. And they have a bridge that closes also. Let me slow down. 30,000 pounds. Gross vehicle weight. Oh, I saw some water on the other side. I didn't see any on that side. I'll let this car get past me. There you go. All right, we have two and a half miles before we have to make a right-hand turn. Fields and fields of cotton. Well, that's a lot of cotton going on there. It could have fields of cotton or it could look like this. Right onto West Del Tiro Road. All right, here is our turn. West El Tiro Road. Oh, nice. There's a gas station here. Gas is 365 here. 411 for diesel. Continue on West El Tiro Road for four miles. Oh, look at that cool helicopter. So we got about four miles. A lot of desert homes here with the desert landscaping. Okay. It says gate ahead. I guess this is the BLM area. El Trio glide port, two miles. And we have a mile and a half before we have to turn, but two and a half miles to our destination. Ooh. Very dry and desolate out here. Mm, it'll be fine for a night, hopefully. <laughs> oh, 
Slide over a bit. Not so bumpy. What you think, Moo Moo? It's like you got a vibrating bed. People have to pay quarters for that usually. You get yours free. Oops. <laughs> I know, there went something. Do not enter when flooded. Good thing the monsoon season is gone. I think. Oh my god, this is a very washboardy road. Everything's falling. What is going on here? <laughs> Jeez. Oh, I'm gonna hug the road here. It's not as washboard. Alright, we're entering Monument Land. Sign said help keep it clean. No littering. Shouldn't do that anyways. We have camping right over here to the right, like I said, so just have to find the drive in. Let me slow down a bit. We have made it. Just have to find a spot. I think I'm just gonna pull off for now. Okay, welcome to Ironwood National Forest. Yeah, when was there a forest? Like a million years ago? I don't see no signs of any kind of forest. Unless they mean a cactus forest. I'm not lying, this totally reminds me of Quartzite. <laughs> or that area. It's just dry. And this actually makes me appreciate my property. I know we're high desert. It is a desert, but still, I feel like there's more vegetation there than here. Scott, the wind blows here, it's gonna get real dusty. I know, right? Oh my goodness. Yay, welcome back to the desert, Aja. Do you want to hug a cactus today? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm getting the hang of traveling. Not as many things on the floor. That's awesome. Welcome back, Mumu. You doing your downward dog? Some yoga this morning? <laughs> welcome back to the desert. I am just joking around. I do like the desert and the wide open space that it provides. And a lot of camping here. There's so much camping compared to the East Coast. That's free. We are east of Picacho Peak, which is right there. We passed it coming this way. And Ironwood is over there in the mountains in the distance. Jeff was just saying some stuff about the Ironwood tree that it was would you say one of the hardest woods? Yeah, and it, and it doesn't float. Doesn't float. It has edible um, berries. Berries. Although I haven't seen one yet. Not that I know of. Is that one right there? So there's a car over there and I see uh, not a Palo Verde, but a different yeah, tree. Right over here. And it says it's deciduous, right? Yeah. So it loses some of its leaves. It loses some of it. Never loses all of them. Yeah. I don't know what that tree is. Where? The one right there. No, that's a Palo Verde. See the darker green one over here um, near where that car's camped? Yeah. I don't know. That might be one. Let's see. All I really see is a lot of Palo Verde. Oh, wait. Here's... Maybe this has some over here. I'm trying to find it in the landscape here. So this is the creosote bush, which is a big, huge one. And this might be it because it's not a Palo Verde. And it has tiny leaves, which is a characteristic of being drought tolerant if it has the small leaves. Oh, look at the cactus growing underneath. What y'all doing? Don't get cactus in your feet. We just found a big specimen of the Palo Verde. You can usually always tell Palo Verde because it has the green bark right here. And it has the leaves that look like spikes. So I found another one of those and it's saying it's a mesquite tree. So no luck finding the ironwood yet. It's probably closer to the mountains over there. Okay, so we're thinking we aren't going to do much exploring because it's a lot of... It just reminds me of quartzite. And I kind of was trying to get away from that whole feel this season. So we're going to head into town and probably just camp in town. There's a town about 20 miles from here. We're going to do that. That way we can continue on and Tucson is the next town it's gonna be 
great. It's a desert town, so I don't know. It's pro we're probably gonna have to experience this until we get to, I guess, Texas, because there's just a lot of desert between here and San Antonio. But anyways, um, yeah, we were thinking this is way too much like quartzite. Now, if there was a meetup or something here and a lot of people were gathering, it would be kind of cool. But yeah, not really happening. So we're going to stay here for a little bit and then we're going to continue on probably in about 30 minutes. Mama, are you ready? I think she's ready. Oh, bye, Dusty Desert. We'll see ya. Yeah, this is not what I was looking for. Thank God, off this bumpy road. <laughs> Hello, street camping. I actually haven't street camped in a while. Probably, I don't know, since California. I did a lot of street camping. Well, and also when I went up to Maine, there was some street camping going on. Welcome to Tucson, Arizona. It didn't say it. I swear it said um, negative 196 degrees. Welcome to Tucson. <laughs> well, it is nighttime and it feels much better. It got hot today. It was like, I think 90 or 89 degrees. It was a bit warm, so we might be moving a little too fast. Luckily, uh, by Wednesday, it should be cooling down, hopefully. And that's in several days. It's like four days away, so we'll see. We stopped by Panda Express and got some food. I got half and half, teriyaki chicken, and then the honey walnut shrimp. Yummy. Well, dinner was wonderful, and it's actually a beautiful night. It feels great. The daytime temperatures were hot, but that means it feels wonderful at night. So, no jacket required. It's a nice breezy night, so we're just taking a walk. Although it is right by the road. What do you think, Mama? What do you think? You are gonna walk back there where it's less traffic, but it's kind of dark and creepy. All right, we made it back. There are rigs all behind me. It's like two or three rigs. And look how busy it is in here. Look at the fifth wheel back there. It's huge. And it has a rotating antenna. It was just circling. It's going doo -doo, on top of it. All right, well, I'm going to call it a night. Well, last night was actually a peaceful night, even though we were parked by the interstate. The traffic ended up dying down later in the night. And it was pretty quiet until this morning. So we are going to be getting on the road. If you want to see where we end up next, don't forget to check out the next video. I want to thank y'all for hanging out with us. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. And also, if you want to check out more videos, they'll be over here. If you want to subscribe or check out Patreon, it'll be over there.